Good morning. Welcome. Pastor Connor here at 7.30 on June 7th. We have a few moments to join together for a word of prayer and some reflection. And then I'll be ready to join you at worship at 9 o'clock and Bible study right around 10.30. So hope you're able to be a part of those in some capacity. If you're joining me live, fantastic. If you're joining me later on in the day, great. I'm going to go ahead and drop my book recommendation here for today in my comment line. And... I can't find my copy of this book right now, but uh, this is The Forgotten Trinity by James White. So today, as most of you know, is Trinity Sunday. We focus on the nature of God as being triune and why that's such a great source of joy for us and hope for us. And maybe you haven't given that a lot of thought. Maybe the doctrine of the Trinity is something that you're aware of. It's just not something you give a lot of thought to. If you'd like to give it thought, and really delve into the mystery of the Trinity and also why this is such a key cornerstone confession of the Christian church, check out uh, James White's, James White's um, The Forgotten Trinity. Well worth your time. Okay, so today we're talking about confessing the Trinity, or you can use the full-mouthed orthodox phrase, Trinitarian monotheism. Isn't that a great way? We are a great phrase. We are Trinitarian monotheists. Right, so great phrase. Or, or as we'll do this morning, we're going to confess the full-orbed Trinitarian confession in the Athanasian Creed. And we'll make reference to that in just a few minutes. But first, what does it mean to confess the Trinity? Well, first the word confess means basically to say what God says. And we learn what God says in his word. So we confess our sins by saying what God has said about our fallen condition. And we confess the creeds to say what God has said about himself and what he has done for us. And those creeds are, as you know, the Apostles' Creed. That wasn't written by the Apostles. It reflects the apostolic teaching. And also the Nicene Creed, named after the city of Nicaea in Turkey, where it was composed. And the Athanasian Creed, named after Athanasius, a 4th century defender of the doctrine of the Trinity. Okay, so a creed, just to review, then, is a summary of Scripture. Now, look, sometimes you have churches who react very negatively against the creeds. They say things like this, uh, the creeds were written by men, and we only confess the Bible. And, look, I appreciate the sentiment, but there's just one simple question I always have for these churches. And what do you believe the Bible confesses. Well, that's your creed, right? So you see this sort of thing all the time uh, in non-creedal churches. They invariably will end up writing their own creeds. Many of them will confess these unique creeds every single Sunday. And really, it's impossible not to have a creed. You can't not have a creed. So Personally, as I look at this and I see there's this sort of need to have their own personal creed and their individual churches, it always touches me as just a little bit narcissistic, all right? That we have to be unique, that we have to be special. And the problem is that so many of these churches end up repeating many of the false teachings that the creeds were originally written to correct. So if you want to think of creeds kind of like bumpers in the bowling lanes, they keep your theology out of the gutter. So the, the creeds are really, really helpful. So today, like I said, is Trinity Sunday, and we're going to confess the Athanasian Creed in worship. Here, give me just a second. I'm going to drop a couple more things in the comment line. Um, one is kind of a first-person um, you know, historical imagination of what uh, Athanasius would have said about the Trinity. And the second one is just the Athanasian Creed uh, on the LCMS website, written in a responsive form. Um, so you can check those out in your own time. But it's there for you in case you're not able to be present in worship or not able to find the Creed. You'll have it uh, and you can reflect upon it. Okay, so here's perhaps the most famous line in this Creed. We worship one God in Trinity and Trinity in unity, neither confusing the persons nor dividing the substance. 
what a theologically rich phrase, right? And most of us just makes our heads spin. But it's just a, a hugely important phrase. And the creed goes on to unpack this. And I want to make sure you understand why this is so important. Because if you get the Trinity wrong, you'll get Jesus wrong. Okay? If you get Jesus wrong, that means you're going to end up demoting him to something less than he is or make him into something other than he is. And then you lose Jesus. And that is a catastrophic loss. So the creed asserts that Jesus is not a creation of the Father. So ancient Arians confess this, and it has been recycled today in today's Jehovah's Witnesses. They're just Arians. Uh, the creed asserts that God is triune. He has three uncreated, co-eternal, co-equal, co-existent persons. So the ancient heresy of modalism, sometimes called Sabellianism, after a man named Sibelius, it's wrong. And this has been recycled today in the likes of T.D. Jakes and Oneness Pentecostalism. So they confess that God exists as the Father and the Son and the Spirit. But sometimes they, they'll, they'll use the phrase as three manifestations of God. So you have to pay attention to language. That's, on, that's important. They're not saying three persons. They're saying manifestation. So God was, is the Father, then the Son, then the Spirit. But God is not Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But we see God being Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, for example, in Jesus' baptism. The Father speaks, the Spirit descends, the Son is in the water. God is three persons. All right, so uh, modalism is, is an ancient heresy of the church just being recycled in oneness Pentecostalism, and T.D. Jakes is one of their main speakers today. The creed would also expose Mormonism, which confesses that Jesus is the Son of a Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother, who also have a Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother, Despite all their efforts to appear Christian, Mormonism still is essentially polytheistic. And the creed would expose Islam too, because they reject the Trinity outright. Okay, so the, the creed, the Athanasian creed needs to stay in the gutters of our theological bowling alley to keep our theology out of the gutter. So, so very important to confess the creeds. Now I want to share one of the beautiful things about God's eternal triune nature. So God has existed as this community of persons forever, okay? Forever. God has been giving and receiving love. And this means that love is characteristic of his nature. It's of the essence of who he is. So you take the Muslim God, for example. In order to love, he had to create an object to love. Can't be, it uh, can't be uh, the essence of his nature. He had to create an object to love. But our God, he created as an extension of his love because he is an eternal, loving community of persons. That means love is of his nature. It's such a, a joyful thought. This is the essence of our God. And, and see, here's the amazing thing, that you are invited to fellowship, to know, to live with, and among this eternal, loving community of persons. It's absolutely astonishing. You get nothing like that in any other world religion. And he didn't have to do this. He didn't have to include us in this. God was complete without creating. But his love is expansive, and as it has expanded to include you. It's one of the many reasons why I treasure the triune nature of God. And I would commend to you the Athanasian Creed for study, to, to confess this creed. It's a beautiful creed. It's lengthy, but it's, it is worth your time for study. Okay, also before we pray, I want you to invite you, invite you to join us back, like I mentioned, at 9 o'clock and, and at 10.30. But also tomorrow morning, I want to come back to uh, some of our current situation going on in our culture, some of the, um, the, the issues that are really... Uh, well, I don't know what the word, word to use, but that, that, that is bothering so many people and, and causing such great concern with, with some of the, the riots and the responses to uh, uh, the killing of George Floyd. How, how, do, we, how do we process this um, and how do we think about this? So we're going to come back to that tomorrow and, and think about that for a little bit. Maybe in the next couple of days we'll do that and we'll do some thinking from, from Scripture and praying on that. But let's take time now to give thanks to God for his triune nature. Triune God, 
We worship you in trinity and in unity. Father, Son, and Spirit, you are uncreated, infinite, co-eternal, and co-equal in majesty and glory. You exist in a community of persons, giving and receiving love, and creating us, your love expanded. In redeeming us, you brought us into fellowship with your community of loving persons. We marvel at the promise of enjoying eternity and the presence of your dynamic and ever-flowing love. Teach us to treasure you, to marvel at the mystery of your being, and to celebrate our inclusion through the blood of Christ in your always and forever love. We give you all glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Hey, thanks for taking the time to join me. Hope to see you back at 9 o'clock and at 10.30 and back tomorrow at 7.30. Thanks, guys.